Welcome back, Seth Bling here. This is probably the hardest I've ever worked on a command block creation. What I've got for you today is the basic programming language in Minecraft. So basic is a programming language that's pretty old. Uh, here I've got it running in Minecraft, it uses all of these command blocks, which I pretty much wrote by hand. And well, let me just show you. So I'm gonna click run script on screen here. And it's gonna start reading through the script and compiling it. So while it does that, let me talk a little bit about what's going on. These are all banners. These are all just normal banners. Uh, I wrote them onto this kind of whiteboard using an on-screen keyboard that you might have seen a little bit earlier. Uh, so you can write a script and these command blocks will actually lex and parse the script, which means they read through the script, figure out what all the letters are, what they mean, and then basically compiles that into something that it can interpret. This happens to be a program that prints out the prime numbers. So we can see it started interpreting down here and it's printed the number two. Well, that's because the first line of the program is print two. So anytime it encounters a print statement like that, it's going to print the number onto the chat dialog. Uh, so then we start at three and while true means just do all of this stuff over and over and over again forever. That's what a while statement does. Uh, if the number is prime, if i is prime, then print i, uh, and then add 2 to i. So it's going to loop over all of the odd numbers starting at 3. Check if it's prime, and if it is, then we print it. Of course, is prime is not a built-in function in my language. I had to implement it here. By the way, we can notice it's printed 3. Uh, function is prime takes a variable x. Here we've called it uh, f with the variable i. So within this function, though, it's called x. Uh, and so the way this this function is prime works is it just checks using j checks every number between two and one less than x, and if x is divisible by j, which is what this little bit means, then we return false. The number is not prime. But if it gets through all these and none of them were divisible, then it returns true. So it's a very simple program if you know anything about programming. Uh, you can see it's going extremely slow. And that's because Minecraft basically runs on a 20 hertz clock. Uh, all of these command blocks over here, they can basically only run 20 times per second because that's how often the game does all of its calculations. So it's running on a 20 hertz clock, and not only that, but there are a ton of armor stands. I'm going to go to game mode, game mode 3, and all of the armor stands pretty much in this... Uh, in this level are right here and you can see they're pr they practically look solid there's in fact if I say uh, at e type equals armor stand <laughs> uh, these are all the armor stands that are around uh, there's a bunch of tokens a bunch of AST stands for abstract syntax tree and a bunch of evaluation objects there's also a function here which is the function object uh, is prime and then there's a var right here which is well there's probably actually a now there's only one right now, just because wherever it is in the evaluation, there's only one variable. So it's probably in the main loop, at least when I typed that. So, and it's probably, whoops, game mode one. So it was probably just looking at i as the only variable, because there's only one variable in, in, unless you're in a function call. So this is a good example of, of one program that I've written, again, very, very slow in execution, and it'll get even slower as time goes on. Uh, it probably is done skipping nine, Let's just see if we can get it to print 11, just so I can show you it's not just printing out all the odd numbers. Uh, but yeah, so so the way a, a programming language like this works, this is not a compiled language, by the, by the way. This is, this is what's called an interpreted language. What that means is it reads through all this text, basically looks for all the words and symbols and numbers, and it creates... Oh, there's, there we go. We got 11 down here. Uh, and creates a, a list of what's called tokens, and then it reads through the tokens and tries to interpret those as things like while statements, where all of these statements are sort of children of the while statement, and this print i statement is a child of the if statement. So it creates a tree out of all those tokens, and it might be hard to visualize. I've <laughs> obviously I have a degree in computer science, so I have a bit more experience working with this stuff than most people. Uh, let's halt the interpreter and break up the on-screen keyboard again. And let's uh, so let's clear this script, and I'll just show you how easy it is to write a program. Uh, so if I just type P R I N T, and then let's do like 
5 plus 6 times 7, and then close the parentheses and hit run script. It'll go ahead and, and run this script. Uh, <clears throat> and we can see it printed out 47. 6 times 7 is 42, plus 5 is uh, 47. I will warn you that this doesn't respect uh, order of operations. So if I had typed 6 plus 7 times 5, I think it would have given me 31 or something. Uh, so use parentheses if, if you think that you need to. Uh, one of the cool things about this is, let's say I have a script and I wanted to, let's say, print i, but I forgot to close the parentheses and then I say maybe like i equals two, I don't know. Anyway, I'm just trying to create a sample script. Uh, it actually will uh, print out the line number that the error occurred on. So we can see uh, syntax error on line two, column nine, expected comma, or an end of argument list. So here it's trying to parse a function and there's no comma here and there's no parentheses so it knows there's an error so it just stops trying to parse it. All right, what are some cool features of this programming language? So first of all, we can save and load scripts. So save slot one had that prime number program. Save slot two uh, demonstrates recursion. Let me run this script. Recursion means that a function calls itself. So here we have this function f takes the number x, so uh, here we're calling it with 5. Uh, we print the number, and then if as long as x is greater than 0, we call the function itself with x minus 1. So this is going to print the numbers from 5 through 0, uh, decrementing each time. And so, so this demonstrates that recursion works, which is something that you need in order for a lot of programs to be what's called Turing complete, means that they can compute any function. Well, any function that's computable. Anyway, uh, so this just is a quick demonstration of recursion. Um, I've got some other cool stuff, though. OK, this should finish up real quick here. Again, very slow language. All right, let's load slot three. While true, mine, right, move, left, mine, up. Mine. OK, what is this doing? Uh, this might look familiar from the computer craft mod. Let's run it and then turn our attention off to the right, <laughs> where I have a turtle. So uh, so this language actually can control mining turtles. And this is a, a very restricted, this, this mining turtle follows a very restricted set of commands compared to the computer craft mod. But what it can do is it can mine, it can turn right, it can move, it can turn left, mine, move up, etc. So here you can see it trying to mine, but there's nothing in front of it. So it's not really mining anything. But now it is actually going to mine stuff. And it'll, this program is basically programmed to just clear a path for me. And it's going to go forever. While true means do all this stuff over and over and over again forever. And so as long as this turtle <laughs> has breath in its lungs, well, that's not quite a good metaphor. But as long as I don't halt this program by clicking here to halt the interpreter, uh, it's going to keep going and clearing a path for me. So uh, these are pretty much all of the functions that a turtle can do. There's also a place function where it will place a stone block. So that can be fun to play around with, and it's a little bit more visually appealing than just printing out numbers into the console. Uh, but that's that's pretty much all my language can do to interact with the world, print numbers and uh, and control a turtle. But controlling the turtle is pretty cool. I think he's almost all the way through. Let's see. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'll let him. I'll let him do that. Uh, actually, I'm gonna halt that, and we're gonna go on. I just want to show you, at the very end here, uh, a list of all the things this scripting language can do, and this is actually gonna take quite a while to compile. One of the big problems with this language is that it generates a lot of armor stands, and of course, I, I'll use armor stands because they're invisible and they can just be held in place and not interacted with. Um, but this programming language generates a lot of armor stands to keep track of all of the things that it's read and where it is in evaluation and all that. And the problem is that that can slow down everything a lot. If I look inside these command blocks, a lot of these are using execute commands with armor stands. And so executing uh, basically looks through all of the armor stands for any armor stands that might meet the criteria. And so the more there are, the more it's going to lag. And you can kind of see the parsing slowing down a little bit as time goes on. And 
so yeah, <laughs> very, very slow language, but it does all work eventually if you give it enough time. Uh, I just want to go over this list and show you kind of what it's going to print out. I might have to fast forward a little bit to, to show you all the results, but we have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. This is the modulus operator, basically six divided by two, what's the remainder? It'll return that. Uh, this is uh, equality, does six equal two. True evaluates to one, not true evaluates to zero. Uh, this is the greater than, less than, there's no greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So you'll have to use not, like not, not greater than in order to, to do less than or equal to. Anyway, true, so there's the and operator, there's the or operator. Uh, this is a for loop, including a step value. So this will print all the even numbers between 0 and 10, including 0 and 10. Uh, here's a function definition with two parameters, uh, and then we'll, we call it, and it, we can return values from functions. Uh, and then here is a quick while loop that does uh, exponentiation. It starts with i equals one, keeps doubling it and printing the number. So I'm gonna let this run. It started to print out values, but uh, just, to, just to make things a little bit more expedient, I will let this run. Eight and four are the expected outcomes of these. Here's 12, but let me fast forward for you. All right, so as this thing wraps up executing this program, uh, I just wanna mention if you want to try this out for yourself, this all is available for download. There's a world download in the description. It doesn't require any plugins or mods or anything. This all just runs on command blocks. These things probably took me about about two weeks to write. It was a lot of work, um, but I'm really proud of the outcome. I think this is probably one of the coolest things I've ever made. It's amazing that this all works. I think it just has to print out one last number. Uh, and so you, all these scripts that I've shown you in this video are included. You just use the load uh, function in the keyboard, and which, which should come up in a moment because this is done executing. Uh, so you just use the load function. You can also save and load your own scripts, write your own scripts. I will say that if you write a script and you want to continue modifying it, my system is not very good for that. So you probably just want to clear out the script using the clear script button on the keyboard every time you wanna write a new script, which means you should probably write the script in like notepad or something. And then, so yeah, there's this clear script button and I would recommend using that every single time you wanna make a modification to the script. There's no backspace or anything. Just didn't really have time to work on that. Uh, but let's uh, let's see, there's all these numbers, eight, four, 12, three, zero, zero. Anyway, I'll let you verify on your own that these are all the right answers. For those of you who know no programming, Here's the for loop zero through 10, and then here's the result of the multiplication function m, and then one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64 is the, uh, the doubling here at the end. So yeah, I hope people download it, play around with it, try writing some cool turtle programs. I think it's really cool that you can control a turtle with an actual programming language in vanilla Minecraft without needing any mods or anything like that. So uh, yeah, I guess that's all about all I have to say about this. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll let you know if I make any further updates or additions to this. That's about it. Thanks for watching.